Thank you, Jack, for that kind introduction. It's a, a tremendous pleasure to be here. It's a tremendous pleasure to be uh, welcomed by you. Uh, since uh, the 10 months or so since I've been uh, Prime Minister, uh, I've already had multiple occasions to uh, sit down with many different uh, leading business figures from around the world, leading uh, political figures from around the world, and uh, very few of them have I had uh, as instant a, a connection and rapport as with Jack. Uh, his uh, vision for uh, what the world can be, his vision for how uh, consumers and individual citizens can uh, flourish and create opportunities for themselves, for their small businesses, uh, and to uh, uh, and to better their own lives is, uh, is uh, tremendous, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, continuing to work with you. But thank you for uh, welcoming me here in my very first event here in Beijing and, uh, and uh, drawing together such an extraordinary uh, group of people. Uh, I want to thank you all for your tremendously warm welcome. It's great for me to be back in China. This is my fourth trip to China uh, in my life. My, first as Prime Minister, obviously. Uh, but in my very first trip to China, uh, I was, uh, I was uh, just a, a young boy, and I was traveling with my father when he was Prime Minister. And that's why uh, it is so important to me that on this uh, first trip to China as Prime Minister, uh, I bring my daughter, Ella Grace, uh, who is uh, discovering uh, uh, this extraordinary country, uh, the way I got to uh, discover it as a, as a young, uh, young child, because the uh, friendship and the openness towards China that uh, my father taught me, I'm certainly hoping to pass along uh, not only uh, to my children, but to uh, generations of Canadians in the future. It is a privilege to speak with you all today, and I don't want to give a speech for too long, because I know you have some questions for me, and I generally prefer conversations over long speeches anyway. Because conversations are how you get to know people, how you build and strengthen relationships. That's what I'm really interested in. And that's why I'm so excited with this opportunity to be here in China, to meet with leaders in government so that together we can work to build stable, long-term relationships and to meet with business leaders like you so that our business communities can do the same. See, there's no question in my mind that both Canada and China will benefit from this renewed relationship. A stronger relationship between our two countries will open doors, create new opportunities for Canadian businesses, and give Chinese businesses a chance to expand investment in Canada. As Prime Minister, it's my job to make sure that our government helps to create the best possible conditions for economic growth. And in Canada, we know that we can't do that on our own. As the world's second largest economy, China plays a central role in driving, driving global economic growth. Non seulement une stratégie économique qui ne tient pas compte de la Chine, qui ne donne pas à notre précieuse relation avec ce pays une importance capitale manque de vision, une telle stratégie serait irresponsable. Nous savons qu'une relation plus solide et étendue avec la Chine est essentielle pour nous permettre d'atteindre nos propres objectifs, créer des emplois canadiens, renforcer la classe moyenne et faire croître l'économie canadienne. Any economic strategy that ignores China or that treats that valuable relationship as anything less than critically important is not just short-sighted, it's irresponsible. We know that a stronger and deeper relationship with China is essential if we are to achieve our own objectives, to create Canadian jobs, to strengthen the middle class, and to grow the Canadian economy. But of course, the benefits of a revitalized relationship go both ways. It's important that global business, global business leaders like you know that Canada is a good place to invest, that we're open for business, and that we're willing to work hard. And more than that, we're willing to work with you in partnership as you plan for future growth. 
And of course, the benefits of a stronger relationship between our two countries go far beyond the simply economic benefits. There are many cultural benefits. We know that as more Canadians come to visit China and more Chinese citizens have the opportunity to visit Canada, our cultural ties will be deepened and strengthened. And there are environmental benefits as well. Climate change is a global challenge that demands a global solution. And it's only when we work together that we can learn from each other, build on shared knowledge, and develop economies that are as clean as they are competitive. There are many other ways in which a more stable relationship will benefit Chinese and Canadian citizens, such as providing more opportunities for regular, frank dialogue on issues like good governance, human rights, and the rule of law. I know this exchange will give you a better exchange of where I'm coming from and what I hope to achieve with this visit. Because as much as I am here to talk, I'm also here to listen and to learn. I want to learn about ways that our government can help create the conditions for stronger economic growth. Growth that will help businesses in both countries and help to strengthen and grow the middle class in both of our countries. I want to do what I can to encourage greater investment in Canada because we need that investment to create good, well-paying, middle-class jobs across the country. But most importantly, I want to make real progress in rebuilding the relationship between Canada and China, because it's a relationship that stretches back generations. As Jack mentioned, it includes my father, who visited your beautiful country many times, including during his time as Prime Minister of Canada, because he knew that a strong relationship with China was important. But before that, to Dr. Norman Bethune, whose selflessness and generosity may have been rooted in his Canadian origins, but that found his highest expression here in China. Deepening the relationship between our two countries will take time. And while there is a place for official delegations and bilateral meetings, I think we can also benefit from more candid and informal conversations like the ones I hope to have with you now. But before I hand the microphone back to Jack, I'll just point out that, like him, I was a teacher early in my career, which means I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs> 谢谢。